chemical bonds and subatomic particles. Chemical compounds make up everything that is life and the things life uses, such as air, food, and water, etc. Now, a Greek philosopher named Democritus, 2,500 years ago, wondered if you could keep splitting something in half until you couldn't do it anymore. We call this an atom, which is the basic unit of matter. Now, if you want to get technical, you can split an atom, and it releases a huge amount of energy, and this is how atomic bombs work. Now, atoms are incredibly small. If you lined up 100 million atoms side by side, they would measure out to be about one centimeter long, or approximately the width of your little finger. Smaller than atoms are the subatomic particles that make up an atom. These subatomic particles are called neutrons, protons, and electrons. Now, neutrons have no charge. This is why it's called a neutron. Think of the word neutral. Protons have a positive charge. This is written as a plus sign without the quotes. Now, both protons and neutrons are bound together by strong forces, and they form the nucleus, which is the center of an atom, and they have about the same mass. Electrons have a negative charge, written as a negative sign without the quotes. Now, electrons surround the outside of the nucleus of the atom, and they're in constant motion, constantly moving around. Now, their mass is about one of 1,840th of a proton. Electrons are attracted to the proton, think opposites attract, but they remain outside the nucleus because of their motion. When atoms have an equal number of protons and electrons, having an equal number of positive charges and negative charges, they carry a neutral charge and are said to be electrically neutral. Remember, you're going to measure the electrons and protons to see if it's going to have a positive or negative charge, because remember, neutrons have no charge. They are neutral. So here we have a chart here. It's a great chart that you may want to write down. It's a, something that you look at over and over again until you have it memorized. Electron has a negative charge. The symbol is a negative sign or a minus sign. Proton, positive charge, po uh, plus sign. Neutron, a neutral charge, and it has no symbol. All right, elements and isotopes. Now, an element is made up of one type of atom. It's represented by one or two letters, like H for hydrogen, Na for sodium, C for carbon, but it's made up of one type of atom. Now, the number of protons in the nucleus of an element is called its atomic number. So when we're talking about the atomic number of an element, that's simply the number of protons in the nucleus, or the center. So atomic number, number of protons. Now, carbon's atomic number is six. That tells me right away that on the periodic table, I'm going to find carbon on number six, and we can conclude, if it's electrically stable, that it has six protons and six electrons, making it stable, making it neutral, having no charge, because the six protons and six electrons, the negative and the positives cancel each other out. It's going to be neutral, no charge. Now, some elements can be what's called isotopes, and isotopes have a different number of neutrons than protons. So the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus is called the mass number. So we have the atomic number, which is the number of protons, and we have the mass number, which is the number of protons and neutrons. So the mass number is protons and neutrons. It's also known as the atomic mass. So here we have three words. We have the atomic number, which is the number of protons. We have the mass number, which is the number of protons and neutrons, and the mass number is also known as atomic mass. So you need to become familiar with these words so you know what they are. So let's take a look at carbon-12. We know it has six protons, six, elect six electrons, and six neutrons. We know it's carbon-12 because we're adding up the protons and the neutrons. If I look at carbon-13, I know this is an isotope because there's a different number of neutrons than there are protons. I know it has six protons, six electrons, and seven neutrons. And if I look at carbon-14, I know that it has six protons and eight neutrons. It's an isotope because there's a different number of neutrons than protons. So how do I know that all these have six protons? Because I know carbon's atomic number is six. And because carbon's atomic number is six, it's going to have six protons. Because remember, the atomic number are the number of protons. All right, radioactive isotopes. Some isotopes are radioactive, breaking down at a constant rate over time, which provides some practical uses. Geologists, which study the Earth, I know they study the Earth because we have the word geo there, geo meaning Earth. So geologists use this to determine the Earth's age, which is 4.54 
billion years old. Isotopes can be used to detect and or treat cancer. Can also be used as what they call tracers to follow the movement of substances and organisms. Remember, an isotope has a different number of neutrons than protons and this can make it radioactive. Chemical compounds. Now most elements are found combined with other elements and this is what we call a compound. A compound can be two or more elements that are combined together. These compounds are written as chemical formulas. For example, water is written as H2O. Sodium chloride is written as NaCl. The physical and chemical properties of a compound are usually different from the elements that form them. For example, oxygen and hydrogen are gases at room temperature and they form explosively to make water. Chlorine is poisonous and sodium reacts violently with water. But when chlorine and sodium combine, they become stable and safe. Nobody dies of salt poisoning or has their body explode when they breathe in oxygen. Now chemical bonds. There are two types of bonds that we're going to focus on. Bonds involve electrons that surround each atomic nucleus, which is the center. And those electrons that are available to form bonds are called valence electrons. Now the first type of bond is an ionic bond, where one or more electrons are transferred from one atom to the other. They are transferred. They go from one atom to another. There is a transferring. Now in an ionic bond, if an electron is lost, the atom becomes positively charged because there will be more protons than electron if an electron is lost. If an electron is gained, the atom becomes negatively charged because there will be more electrons than protons. Now it's important to understand that protons are not gained or lost. Only electrons are gained or lost. If something is negatively charged, it doesn't mean it lost a proton. It means it gained an electron. If something is positively charged, it doesn't mean it gained a proton, it means it lost an electron. Now sodium combines with chlorine. The sodium loses its one valence electron to chlorine. This results in sodium becoming positive and chlorine becoming negative and it becoming stable. Now notice the sodium loses its one valence electron and because it's losing it and it's transferring it over to chlorine, this is what we call an ionic bond. If an element carries a charge, both positive or negative, we call it an ion. Now some elements share what is called a covalent bond. Now this means the electron is not lost or gained, but shared, and why this is why it's called a covalent bond, co. The electron travels from one atom to the other and it is shared. The structure that results when atoms are joined together by covalent bonds is what is called a molecule, which is the smallest unit of most compounds created by a covalent bond. Molecules can also form this from the same element. For example, oxygen, O2, the ozone layer, O3, all coming from the same element. There are things that have a single bond, which is when the elements share two electrons. It can also have a double bond which is when the elements share four electrons. It can also have a triple bond when the elements share six electrons. All right, the van der Waals forces. Now, atoms of different elements do not have the same ability to attract electrons. This is because of their structure. Now, sometimes molecules become close together and can develop a slight attraction between oppositely charged regions of the nearby molecules. Now these forces are not covalent or ionic bonds, but they can hold molecules together, especially when those molecules are very large. And that is what we call the van der Waals forces. If you have any questions, you can always leave a comment or email me, and we'll see you guys next time.